Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a good day and making some really good trades and my name is Mickey and I'm just head of headline trading here. I'm going to give you guys some analysis on the S&P 500 right now. So at the moment the S&P has been selling off for basically a couple of weeks now. This is our fourth week in the red and I think we may be getting close or maybe you know, in the next day, tomorrow, we may be getting a bounce in the market. And right now, we'll dive right in. We'll take a look at the S&P. And we can see that right now, the SPY had a basically, uh, you know, a flat day. But we did get some downside in the earlier half. All right. So we that was uh, pretty nice to see. But then we saw that the bulls and the big money might have stepped in and started to buy up. Right. So if we take a look at the S&P 500, we are very close to printing a potential green dot here in the markets. And after that, after these green dots print, usually we see a nice little rally, right? Sometimes they can be 3%. Sometimes they can extend on for long and long periods of time, as you guys can probably tell before we see, you know, a sustained correction. So 9%. And then you got another green dot right here. And that actually triggered you know, a huge rally that lasted until essentially the highs here of 40, 4,600 on the S&P 500. So again, they can lead to very big things. And right now, if we take a look at some other time frames on the daily time frame, like the NASDAQ, we can see that we actually printed a green dot on this new daily candle here. Same thing for the Russell 2000. Actually, the Russell 2000 uh, was uh, yesterday's candle, or I guess technically still today, but it was yesterday's market candle and now in the overnight we can see that we've printed a new one and we actually have some very bullish tool band strength index numbers okay and if we take a look at the sorry the dow jones we are getting pretty close to potentially printing a green dot here as well and now it is important to note that this is the daily time frame right i'm not showing you guys the big bear scenarios that i was talking about on the weekly time frame right so this is some pretty short time frame so on the daily time frame, we are getting a little bit oversold right now, and we could be getting due for a bit of a correction, or at least at the very least, uh, sorry, correction to back up to our, the upside. So at least at the very least, like a relief rally from all the selling that we've been experiencing. Okay, so let me just take a look at the larger time frames like once again, right? So if we get on to the weekly time frame on the Dow Jones, right, we still have a 16 and a minus five and a red cross on the weekly time frame. And then we head over to the S&P, and the S&P is something very similar, a 16 and a minus 5, right? We're starting to see that green money flow start to roll over as well. The NASDAQ, something very similar as well. We got a red dot here, and then we're starting to see that green money flow roll over as well. And then same thing for the Russell 2000. It's actually about to cut into that red money flow, and we have bearish dual band strength index numbers, 14 and a minus 4 there. And if we head over to the monthly, so the monthly you know, we can see this big Elliott wave pattern right here is looking very bearish indeed. And that, again, is the bigger pattern, right? The bigger pattern, the monthly time frame is showing that the markets could be getting ready to head lower. Okay, but it doesn't mean that it cannot go higher before it goes lower, right? This B wave, the top that you have right here on the Russell 2000, it's still very possible that it can extend higher, right? This B wave can go up. It can go up and up and up and it can even overshoot the A wave and form in, in, into an extended B wave and then come down into a C wave. So B waves can extend. They're very hard to try and uh, you know predict where they're gonna you know land and then start to reverse. But ultimately right now on the monthly time frame, that is your primary count. Right, if you take a look at the S&P 500 on the SPY, you also have a very similar pattern. It depends on which chart you look at. Obviously, you look at the weekly pattern it's looking still very bullish, right? And still looking like, like the monthly pattern is going to play out there. Uh, but if you look at like the SPY, right? Which is the SPY ETF, uh, the S&P 500 ETF. Uh, it looks like it's potentially about to top out here on the next monthly candle. We may get a red dot. And then after that, we might we, we may see a little bit more upside, right? Obviously here you got a little bit more upside before you start to roll over. But these can mark significant tops in the market. And you may see some downside after that, okay? So it's just something important to note here. Uh, you know, don't discount these things. Pay attention to them. Obviously, if we get a huge rally, this this momentum wave can still extend higher. 
right? But right now, you know, we've seen a lot of selling and on the daily time frame now, you're starting to see uh, the SPY ETF enter red money flow, right? And when, uh, last time, so the, like the most recent one I'll talk about, like when we last time we crossed into red money flow, you saw that we were actually nearing the lows, right? We're getting pretty close to getting a bounce. So when we crossed here, it was what? It was uh, January 19, then you had one, two, three, sorry, January 19, and then one, two, three, right? Three days of more selling, and, and then, you know, a couple more days later of consolidation, you got your green dot confirmation, and then you had a non, like a 6% six, 6 rally back up towards the upside. But ultimately after that, you know, the trend was still towards the downside, and you got another red dot in red money flow, and then boom, you know, you saw another significant uh, sell-off and then it came back lower. It consolidated, it consolidated, and then you rallied back up. And then you got another red dot and red money flow and it came right back down. And, it, you know, the sell-off continued. Now, right now, we'll have to see if this is going to end up being, you know, a, a uh, it's just an ABC pattern that has finished playing out like this. And it's done. Right, and we're going to extend up into a into a wave five that's going to bring us to potentially new all-time highs, or is it going to play out something like you know an extended in sorry not an extended uh, but into a bigger correction like so into a wave one into a wave two which is going to fail with a red dot up here something like we've seen back here right with a red dot you know we bounce back up you get a red dot in red money sorry right here red dot in red money flow. And then you fail and you start to come back down and then uh you know you go to lower lows so that's something i'm paying attention to here and i'm going to be you know keeping it keeping an eye on and you know updating you guys as well so if it does if it does do something like this then you are going to you know take out the october lows and then you're gonna you're gonna go to potentially <laughs> i don't know how low this can go but it, 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 can, it can go significantly low when the market sells off and panics uh, but overall that's the count right now i think that the the you know we've put in a potentially significant top here and then we've cut we've come down uh, is this c wave done yet you know we'll have to see in the coming days if we bounce tomorrow then yeah and we keep rallying up for the next couple of days then you could have put in a bottom of the c wave after that you'd have to potentially take a look at where the wave two is going to end up and if it ends up you know topping out you know, at certain fib retracements then you know we'll have to see uh, if that holds, and if that resistance holds, then you've 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 put in a major top here, and you you're potentially getting ready to start to roll over. But again, always pay attention to money flow and where it's going, and that is going to be a very big leading indicator of where the the market is going to be headed using market cipher. Okay, and now let's just talk about something else is like the dollar, right? So the dollar, the dollar, the dollar. Everyone is trying to time the top in yields and the timing the top in the dollar, right? And getting ready, the dollar is getting ready to crash, right? The dollar is so weak. Well, you know what? The dollar is, is very, the dollar is very strong right now. The dollar has probably been never been this strong in my opinion for a very long time. The dollar has had like a 12 week uh, running streak here of nonstop rallies. And right now, if you take a look at the daily time frame, you have an extreme amount of green money flow. And this thing could keep on going for a very long time, which means gold and equities could still be under pressure in the coming, you know, uh, in the coming weeks and months. All right. I don't think the dollar is ready, is, is ready yet to, to start to fold in. Uh, and if we take a look at yields, right, you can see that the 10 year yield, uh, longer term dated yields are starting to you know, really perk up now. You're starting to see the 20 year blast off and started to break out from its resistance at 4.65. And now it's at 4.9%. It's just underneath 5%. I mean, I my coworker texted me the other day. He told me that there's no way the 20 year yield, the 20 year bond is going to go to 5%. I mean, now we're like 10 basis points away from that. And now you're starting to see that the, the yield curve is not steepening anymore. And it's starting to uninvert just a little bit, right? You're, it's not, it's not a, it's not, it's not getting so crazy now. They're starting to merge back a little bit closer, which is good to see. But usually, when that happens, that the, that's when the Fed 
and the market starts to top out and you start to roll over because the Fed starts, needs to start stimulating the market that's about to correct. Uh, but anyways, we'll, we'll move on. I'm not going to stick too long on the yield thing, but focusing on the dollar is that the, the, the monthly pattern right now, you've got a green dot on this month and it's proving to be extremely bullish, right? So in my opinion, if we keep going this way, the next monthly candle that we are going to get is most likely going to be very bullish as well. And if the dollar keeps rising and rising and rising, and let's say we go back up to a nominal high here of 118, then the market is going to be under tremendous pressure, right? And it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a very big toll on Bitcoin and gold and commodities as a whole. And then you're going to see oil come down and then natural gas will come down. And talking about oil, oil is going higher. Oil is at $95 a barrel right now. This is extremely, extremely bad for the economy. If you're seeing oil go up, if we already have an inflation problem, that is a huge, huge problem. In the long run, that is not going to be good. Okay, it may look like it's strong growth for the economy. Look how the demand is so high. Or maybe, you know, it's, it's just because there's too much, infl too much inflation. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's just never going to end well when, when, that, when that happens. Anyways, we'll, we'll move on. I don't want to stick too much on oil. I just want to talk about the dollar right now. So I don't think the dollar's done uh, rallying here. I think that, you know, we are getting over, overdue for a pullback, we are starting to run into some pretty big resistance. We've already breached uh, 105.6, which everyone thought that this was gonna be the top with this topping candle right here. But I said, I think it still has room to run and it's been running. Uh, but I think that eventually you are going to pull back, right? Because nothing goes up in a straight line. Even the dollar can't go up in a straight line forever. Eventually you'll you'll pull back. And when you do, uh, then you will get you know some consolidation and if you manage to hold, then you'll be set up to go uh, put on another high in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the dollar, and that'll probably be another low for for the market. So if the dollar starts to pull back here, uh, then that'll be bullish for the market. That'll be bullish for Bitcoin and gold and you know commodities. Uh, then you'll get a short-term rally in the S&P. Uh, but if it firms up and it goes higher, then you're going to see that market's going to start to roll over again because the dollar uh, goes against. The market, as you guys can probably tell from this chart uh, that I created here, every time the dollar goes up, uh, the markets, uh, you know, start to, to roll over and starts to go down, right? So dollar up, uh, market starts to go down, go down, go down, go down until the dollar tops out and then boom, 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 uh, market rallies, right? So same thing here, dollar starts to, you know, drop, drop and drop and drop is in a steep downtrend and it finally starts to rally like in like a crazy amount. And then you start to see the market start to come down. But again, I think the dollar is going to eventually start to pull back just a little bit, consolidate, and then it'll, you'll keep going higher, which means the trend for the market should be lower. And then you could say another thing to keep track of is uh, the TLT with the S&P 500. And right now, I mean, do I need to say it? I think I've said it so many times now is that the market can go up and diverge from the TLT, but ultimately will follow the TLT. So if bond yields keep going up and the bond, and the bond prices keep going down, the market is going to go down with the bond, the bond market, right? So right now the TLT is just a 20 year, you know, treasury bond ETF. And the more this goes down, the more the market is going to go down. And again, usually it reverts back all of its gains, all, the, all of the divergence, all of the stupidity, uh, in the rallies and the equities, the, the the hype and the, you know, whatever the market deems it so at the time, eventually realizes what the bond market is doing and then it, 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 it goes back to its mean and it corrects back with the, the, the TLT, right? And then when the TLT bounces and rallies, then you get a bounce in the, in the markets, right? So again, we could be due for a short-term bounce in the TLT, although, you know, I, I don't want to <laughs> get in front of that freight train and you know starts calling bottoms for the TLT because every day that we've had now we've been gapping down or if we open up we make a lower low at, by the end of the day in the TLT and that's been like the last uh one two three four like five six 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 sessions here we did have a green day here but the next day was a massive gap down in the TLT so I mean I I don't know <laughs> I don't know what to make of it right now but we are overdue 
Uh, we're getting pretty much oversold here on the weekly and we do have bullish divergence but if you keep going lower and you take out this low then that'll be invalidated and then you could you i don't even want to know what kind of can of worms that would open for the tlt i could open up the door for even higher yields for the the, the 20 year and that could be very very bearish anyways uh, that's my two cents on the market right now i think we are going to be probably getting a you know a short-term bounce I'll, i will have to see if it's short-lived or it turns into something else uh, my bias is still towards the downside giving everything i'm seeing in the dollar yield uh and then oil gold and equities and stuff like that i think a lot of stocks are are starting to you know top out we could talk very 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 briefly like nvidia you know this 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 earnings uh report that we got you know the massive gap up and then the non-stop selling that we got in NVIDIA that day, to me, uh, you know, it was record er revenue, record earnings. It was the best. It was the climax. And all you saw was selling. And then on top of that, you have the CEOs taking profits and everyone will always defend. Oh, you know, they, because they're bullish, right? They want the price to go higher. So they'll always give you a good reason why, you know, the, the CEO said, like, of course, he, he needs to sell. You know, everybody, every CEO does this. But, you know, he's just doing a, such a big amount at the highs. And they also did it back here uh, when we were trading at 300, right? And then, it, and then we went down. So these guys always ha know what's coming ahead in the markets, right? They're smart. They know what the, their, their company is doing. And they're, they're smart enough to take profit, right? The retail money is just holding on to dear hope that uh, this, low, this low holds. And if it doesn't and it gives in, then you're going to have a huge drop in the video. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, like and subscribe. Peace.